Hey guys, Daniel here, and welcome back to the vlog. I have a very interesting little study that has popped up from the uh, Psychology Science, the Journal of Psychology Science, um, that kind of shows why we always struggle to even exist around other people who are even slightly different than us. <laughs> the study in question uh, took 112 babies, tested little babies. Um, range from nine, month, 9 months to 14 months. The basic experiment with these two cute puppets, they would like one thing or another. They would like graham crackers, or they would like green beans. And then they would talk about what they like, blah blah blah. So they would be showing liking this thing, and then these other puppets would come, and they would either then be nice to the other puppets, so these three puppets, they'd be either nice to these puppets, or they'd be whatever, or they'd be angry at the puppets, and hurtful against the puppets if they liked to eat the green bean or the graham crackers. What really surprised the researchers in this study is that the babies, you know, 9 months to 14 months, they're so young, they, they have no... They're, they're completely unbiased, they're completely innocent, really. They would show, pref they would actually like those puppets who mistreated the other puppets for liking something different. So the one puppets, the two puppets, they would like graham crackers, and then the guys would come in and they're like, no, we like green beans, and then they would hurt them and harm them, and the babies liked them. The one baby even kissed one puppet. He was just so enthused with this puppet who was so mean to this thing, and all he did was be different. He just had a different opinion on something than the other puppet. Wow, babies start like that. That certainly explains a lot about us. It goes back to this whole idea that if you took two people, two groups of people, and sat them beside each other, and they never knew what they are, instantly they would start hating something about the other person. And this shows to actually prove that once, you know, touted as a Republican hoo-ha stuff, is that, yeah, we, we actually just kind of instantly hate anything. We hate what's different. This makes sense evolutionary speaking. I mean, everything about evolution is about surviving. You're, you're what you are needs to continue on. Well, no better way to have what you are to continue on than have a bunch of people who are like you kill people who aren't like you, therefore you go on. It, it makes perfect sense when you talk about apes and stuff, but we're not apes. We're not just going on instincts of what we think is good or what is bad. We have to make decisions. Fortunately, these decisions generally are based on these baser instincts. Take the classic example of Kipling's The White Man's Burden. At one point in time, the, the white man, at least partially thought that it was our job to impose our culture on these lesser peoples. And unfortunately, we kind of still strive that today. It's, it's transcended to something now that we think we've done all the wrong in the world. It's a very Eurocentric kind of viewpoint, but we've done all the wrong in the world and we have to fix it. It's the same thing, really. You think that something's wrong and you think only your solution, the white man's solution, is the fix. And this shows that we, we've been doing this forever. We've been doing this since we were little rodent things like we've discussed in previous episodes or all the way up to apes and all the way up to us our basic instinct is to separate what is not like us into other groups and then we exterminate them yeah like anything it doesn't always have to be that way we always thought that we have a tendency to fall back on these old ideas and go with them but we go we've shown that we can do great things we show that we can surpass anything we made laws, we don't kill each other for everything now. We have civil conduct and we actually express our ideas and express our feelings and everything and without killing each other, which is brilliant. What this really shows is that this is something that's part of us and we have to accept it. That's part of the problem too, is that we just, we feel like if we just keep pushing it off, you know, it's not going to be part of us, this is something for lesser people. No, this is part of everyone. This was a bunch of babies in North America, the whitest of the white, excluding like Sweden. It kind of affects everyone, and what we need to really do is, I guess, focus on... I don't want to use the word indoctrinization, but we know this is a problem. Like, we know that this isn't just something that a couple people feel, like racism. Apparently, we're all just kind of racist down, way deep down, but it's like cultural racism. Not even... I mean, picking someone's skin is easy, but literally picking, you don't like that food, so I hate you? <laughs> That's not even... I don't even think there's a word for that. Foodist? Foodism. But this show that we do need to take a more active approach, like a really not tolerate but really hammering these kids when they're really young to just accept and accept and accept. This really show that just a multicultural, uh, a tolerating 
peoples is not going to work because we're never going to do that. You can't just tolerate someone. You got to go so far. You got to push it so far down our throats to accept things. And maybe, you know, maybe we can change our makeup. I mean, everything has evolved over time. That's the problem we're facing right now is that we've skipped so far. Technology has allowed us to just go so far into the future of what our freaking lizard brains can even compute. And we're seeing all these things like light bulbs and this computer, and we're not even really understanding it. We're, our whole evolution is not cut up to us. Think about you driving a car. Your primitive little brain is like, oh my god, I'm going 60 miles an hour, or 80 kilometers if you're uh, an intelligent country, going 80 kilometers an hour, and you're, oh my god, my brain, I'm running so fast. But you're not running fast. You're in a steel vehicle that is traveling that fast, and you're sitting there and it's confusing for our brains. Unfortunately, this is probably just something we have to deal with until evolution catches up, and hopefully, at some point, evolution will catch up. Evolution is caught up to everything. This is just another thing it needs to work at. So, let's stick it to evolution. Let's just shove it down our kids' throats that we need to start accepting, really make it important, or eliminate all other cultures. There's two ways to do that. Either kill everyone, which isn't cool, or, well, my preferred method, really, is a homogenized, bringing it together you trade a little bit of your culture away, whatever, and then you accept another's and you grow stronger. It's kind of like emerging a gene pools. I guess I would work. I guess really the best way is really for just to accept other cultures and what they are and accept other people and accept but acceptances. It's difficult. Is that possible? With our the way we understand things, that even from such a young age, we are just so unaccepting of another person's viewpoints that we will go so far as to hate them. Is that even a possible option for us? Again, is that something maybe eventually evolution will just kept up, catch up to us if we just keep working on it? Or really is the only way to have a, a stable society to do the whole homogenous culture and it bring everyone together, you trade off, and this is the way it works. Like, you have this whole, other cultures come in and you trade off a little bit there, you trade off a little bit here, and you bring it in. That's not what's happening right now. That's why we have a lot of problems in Europe and in Canada here as well. We're fairly multicultural, but it doesn't really do anything. Cultures still hate each other. We've got to kind of figure this out. And this shows what the base problem is. And it's encouraging because we know this isn't just like a, you know, a fever dream of liberal hippies and stuff like that. We know this actually happens. If you like Graham Carters, I don't even want to talk to you. Just kidding. Everyone loves Graham Come it's just ridiculous. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about this, if it's even possible for us to change our genetic inheritance and actually strive for something greater, or if we just have to accept it, roll with it, and work on what we can do with what we already have, work with what we've got. Let me know in the comments down below. And of course, if you like what you've seen, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, and uh, check out next later for stuff, and we're going to be doing something really cool for Friday, so check that out.